What's up YouTube, welcome to the fifth part of this series. This part will be a culmination of everything we have learned so far. So in this video, we're gonna be recreating my tile flip example from the animation nodes teaser video, which you can see on screen now. Before we start, I wanna give a shout out to some people who did the homework from last week's video. These people are Krister Svanlund, Amadeus Max, Dorian, Noah Passel, and Big Three. I especially like Big Three's example as he went a little beyond and had a bit of fun with the design. Now let's get started. First, we have to create the tile that we're gonna flip. So in order to do this, I'm gonna hit Shift A, Add Mesh Cube, go into Edit Mode, scale it down on the Z axis, select the top face, inset it, extrude it a bit, and then scale that down. Now, I don't want to mess with the default size at all, as I want this to be exactly a radius of one, as it'll make the math later on easier. Then I'm gonna go over to our Object Panel, and I'm gonna rename this Tile. It's always important to rename your objects when you're using animation nodes, that way they don't get lost in the node tree. Next, I'm gonna drag up our timeline, hit Shift F3 to go over to the node editor, add in a new node tree, and then I'm just gonna recreate the grid array tutorial using the tile object. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, go to object, add in an object node, I drop that in, add in an instancer, plug that up, go to mesh, generators, add a grid, connect the vertices to the instance, which will automatically add in a get list length node. Something cool that was pointed out to me by the developer is that if you select a node with a list output and then hit W, you'll be given the option to loop through the object's outputs automatically. So if I just click this loop through objects, it automatically creates a loop that will loop through the entire object list. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna name this tile loop. That W trick works with any node. So if I right click on this grid mesh and hit W, it gives me the option to loop through the vertices, edge indices, and polygon indices as well. But I'm going to hit escape because I do not want to do that right now. Next, I'm going to add in our object transform output. Connect that up, enable the X, Y, and Z location. Add our vector list, whoops, vector list iterator. Plug that up, vertices into the vector list, vector into the location. And because a plane with the radius of one is actually two units wide, I have to change the X and Y distance to two. And now you can see they're all perfectly spaced out. And in fact, I'm gonna change this to something more like 10 by 10. Also, you'll notice that our original tile object is still visible. So if we go over to the outliner and uncheck the eye, we can disable that and make it hidden. So the way this is going to work is we are going to be using the distance from an empty in order to change the rotation of each individual tile. So I'm going to hit shift A, go to empty, add in a plane axis empty, drag that up a little bit so we can see it better, and then I'm going to name this effector. That's just a term that comes from Cinema 4D. It's basically an object that affects other objects. Next, I'm gonna duplicate our object input. I'm gonna drag that down by our loop and I'm going to eye drop our effector. Next, I'm gonna hit Shift A, go to Vector, add in a distance node. I'm also gonna hit Shift A, go to Object, Transform Input, connect up our effector so we can get the location, connect that to the bottom input, and now to get our distance from the tile, we can do one of two things. We can either add in another transform input and connect that to our object, or we can just use the vector input as the tile is being moved to that vector anyways. And that actually saves us a node, so I'm gonna do that instead. Now we have the distance from the effector to the tile. So what we need to do is we need to be able to plug this into the rotation. So I'm gonna enable our X rotation, add in a combine Euler, Plug that up, plug the distance into the x-axis, and you can see it immediately has an effect. If we start moving it around, you can see it flips all the tiles individually. But remember, by default, combined Euler uses radians. So we want to check use degrees, and we have a much more subtle effect. But we're having some problems. So let's add in our map range node to have more control over the rotation of each individual tile. So I'm going to hit Shift A, go to Number, Map Range, and drop that in. 
remember, the output in this is going to be the rotation of the tile. So we want the minimum output to be zero and our output max to be 180 degrees because that's how much it's spinning around. So I'm going to change the output max to 180. Now you can see nothing really happens, and that's because the input min and the input max are set too small. So let's drag those up. Let's drag up the output max first. Now this is going to be outer radius of tiles that our effector can affect. And I'm also going to drag up the input min, as this is going to be sort of the inner radius. As you can see, as I drag up the input min, the tiles that are closer flip over a bit more. And now if we drag this around, you can see all the tiles flip over within radius of our effector. And there's also one more thing we can do with this map range node. Now, we had a little bit of control over the fall off by using the input min and the input max. However, there's one more thing we can do. If we check this use interpolation box, we can change the fall off type. So right now it's linear. However, we can also change this to things like exponential. We can change it to quadratic, circular. And we can also change off the ease in and ease out depending on what effects we want. And really, they all have different effects, so it's fun to just play around with them and see which one you like best. And in the next tutorial, I will be showing you how to create our own interpolation modes using curves. However, I'm not going to get into that in this tutorial. And that's it. Now you can just animate this empty however you want. You can use animation nodes or you can hand keyframe it like I did. And you have the effect complete. Now, last time I gave you homework, but this time I'm going to leave you with more of a challenge as it will require you to dig a little bit more into animation nodes yourself and really use your brain, understanding of math, and problem solving to complete. The goal will be to make the example you see in front of you, where as an empty gets closer, cubes that are duplicated in all the vertices of an outer sphere move into the inner sphere. I will provide the initial setup down in the description below for you to get started as it will provide a few hints. Now, a few requirements. The cubes must all be facing outward. The cubes must also adjust their size as they move between the two spheres. Now, it doesn't have to be an exact copy of what I did, but it has to look pretty similar. Again, this is a challenge, so there are a few things required to do this that I haven't covered in my series. This means that you will have to look through the list of possible nodes yourself and try to figure out the solution. However, I will provide you with a few hints to start you off. If you go under mesh, object mesh data, you can get a list of vertex locations output as a vector list. Also, identical object vertices will loop through at the same time. So when you loop through them, the first vertex in each list will be the same for each object and so on. Even if you rotate and scale these, it'll still be identical. You can send me your submissions either by linking to them in the comments below or through Twitter and be sure to provide me with the node trees as well. Same as last time, I'll be featuring best entries in the next video when I go over my approach to the problem. Good luck and remember, if you like my tutorials and want to see more, be sure to like, subscribe, and support me on Patreon to see my videos up to a week before they come out on YouTube. Also, if you have any suggestions for future tutorials, be sure to leave them down in the comments below and I will see you next time.